So uh, we watched the Super Bowl uh, at the Youth Center on Sunday. And uh, this year at the Super Bowl, the national anthem was sung by someone named Christina Aguilera. I'm just kidding, I know who she is. Anyway, she messed up the words, right? And uh, we all kind of uh, saw that, we all laughed. Uh, and then I see today on the internet, people are like still talking about this thing that happened, this, uh, this incident of, uh, you know, flubbing the national anthem. So um, I had some thoughts on this I thought I would share with you guys. Well, first of all, she probably got lost because she was like changing the melody so much that it became almost unrecognizable. Um, but here's the bigger issue. Why do we have a celebrity sing the national anthem for us at all in the first place? Now, I guess it's because the Super Bowl is a big spectacle. You know, it's a big show. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they figure the more stars they can get involved, um, the better. Okay, fine. Um, but, you know, the national anthem is like an American civic ritual. You know, having like an official national theme song is something that um, binds us together as a people, as a certain kind of community. So, you know, back in the day, people used to all sing the national anthem together, right? You know, but nowadays, you know, you don't really see that. I mean, you go to a sporting event or whatever, and it's always somebody else is singing it for us, you know. Or even when I go to, like, the high school football games and the marching band plays the Star Spangled Banner, hardly anybody sings, right? Even though they say, please join in the singing of our national anthem. You know, I, I always sing because I think, you know, I think everyone ought to just sing it, but... Um, but really, if you do that, you kind of stick out. There's not that many people around you that are singing, right? Or they're kind of mumbling or whatever. What's happened is our culture has done this thing over time where music making in general has gone from being something that people used to do communally, used to do together, to being something that is almost exclusively done only by specialized professionals. It used to be that most people were pretty comfortable just singing in part of a group, you know, and, and most people had some kind of working knowledge of a musical instrument, so when people would get together socially or as a family, um, you know, making music was just a thing that people did for the heck of it, for the social, for the communal experience. There is a church connection coming here, don't worry, I'll get to it. Now, there have always been professional musicians, and I'm not saying that, like, every family was the Von Trapp family singers, but what happened was, once people figured out a way to uh, permanently record music, the record industry, over time, I think, built a, a wall between performers and audience. Now, that led to a lot of great music and a lot of great recordings, don't get me wrong, but I think that uh, nowadays it seems to me like people are a lot less comfortable singing, even in a group, because we just kind of have this mentality that that's something that's done by professionals. And this mentality also affects our church and we see it in the way that we worship together. When we worship at Mass, every voice should be raised up in song, whether you sound really, really good or really, really bad. God doesn't care. All God cares about is that we give him our best. And so even if your best is not something that would get you on American Idol or singing the national anthem at the Super Bowl, that's okay. Because we are called to full, active, conscious participation in the liturgy not to sit back and let somebody else do it for us. Now, when you look around at Mass, I think you notice that we have a lot of Catholics who aren't really comfortable with this, right? Um, there's a lot of folks in the pews who just don't sing the songs. We even have people who come up to our youth music ministry and say, oh, you kids do such a great job, and it's great that they're so supportive. But you look out there during Mass, and they're not fully, actively, consciously participating. I think there are a lot of reasons why Catholics do this, so I don't want to oversimplify this, but I do think that one of the reasons is that cultural barrier that we've put up between active, performing musicians up on a stage and the audience passively listening in our seats. The thing that really gets me is when people speak about worship music at church as a performance. Worship is not a performance. It's the work of all the people together. Even when we're called upon to lead worship, we're not performing for others. We're supposed to be helping them enter into prayer. If they're just watching and listening to us, we've got a problem. Just as our country's national anthem is a ritual that binds us together as a certain kind of civic community, singing, worshiping, praying the liturgy is a ritual that binds us together as the body of Christ. 
I know at this point we can't really do anything about our popular culture outsourcing the national anthem to professional singers. You know, that ship has sailed with results such as we saw on Sunday. But we can make a change in our church, in the way that we participate when we're together. So every time you go to Mass, challenge yourself to fully, actively, consciously participate. Not just in the music, but in the whole prayer of the Mass. Praise God in his holy sanctuary. Give praise in the mighty dome of heaven. Give praise for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his great majesty. Let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah.